Well, welcome to this uh, select group of invited uh, audience. Uh, some of you I've seen before at our previous talks this morning, but uh, uh, at over the lunchtime slot, I'm very pleased to say we've got four very distinguished heads to talk about their wonderful uh, schools. And it's a chance for us to explore uh, what it is about boarding that could be attractive uh, for our children. So let me start with uh, moving uh, through, as it were, with Alistair Churnside, who is now the head of St. Edward's in Oxford, where I know a lot of parents send their children. Uh, and um, he was previously deputy head of Harrow. Uh, then we have Emma Goldsmith, who is the new head of Dragon School, also in Oxford, the 12th person to lead this co-educational prep school since it was founded in 1877, and the first woman to do so, which is uh, particularly resonates with me because I'm an old Pauline and the head of the old Pauline club, and we've just got our first, uh, the first woman to head the school since 1509. So St Paul's is also catching uh, up. And then we've got uh, Philip Evett, the headmaster of Highfield School, one of the leading co-educational boarding and day prep schools in the country, situated in uh, 175 acres of stunning grounds in the borders of Surrey, Hampshire, and West Sussex. And then Henry Price, the headmaster of Oakham School, having previously headed Wellington School in Somerset. Uh, let's start with, I've asked each of our distinguished guests here today to speak briefly about what it is about boarding at their school that is so compelling. Alistair. Thank you very much. Very generous introduction, Ed. Uh, so my name is Alistair Chernside. I'm the warden of St. Edward's in Oxford. And the first thing I'd say to you is that Harry Potter was not set in a day school. So we don't offer flying lessons in boarding schools today, but we do offer pretty much everything else. And the reason we can do that in a boarding school is that the school day is so long. So we start at about 8 o'clock in the morning at Teddy's, and we finish uh, with the last, the last pupils from the uh, plays, concerts, society meetings, debates, lectures, getting back to their house uh, after 10. So in that limitless range of opportunity, there's a little bit of something for everybody to a, to a greater extent than you can get in a school which, uh, which shuts its gate at 5 o'clock. Partnership work with local schools, with charities, is a hugely important part of the work of all independent schools. And that work is made easier in a boarding school because we have the children with us for so much of the time. We're also helped by location in boarding schools, especially when they're in towns like Teddy's in Oxford. Uh, what that means is that it, even within the timetable, pupils can be in and out working with, with other, with other organisations locally. Worth noting, though, that in those long, those long days, there are moments for relaxation. So uh, back in the Harry Potter film, Harry and Hermione spend quite a lot of time together in the Gryffindor common room. And that's uh, a good parallel. So some schools, like St. Edward's and others, uh, have uh, co-educational boarding houses where girls and boys are there together. And we think in a boarding context, in any school context, that's the best possible preparation for life. A lot of schools talk about equality, diversity, and inclusion. In a co-ed boarding school, you see it every day as a pupil. You live it uh, during your time at school. Boarding schools also are diverse in other ways. So about 20% of the pupils at Teddy's come from overseas, don't have a UK passport. And that range of, of nationalities in the school is a hugely important part of a child's experience uh, with us. Uh, they're talking about their backgrounds, their homes, their cultures, their languages, not just in lessons, uh, but in the corridors, in the boarding houses, in the informal, unstructured moments as well. Boarding schools can run only because they have really committed staff. And in lots of them, most of the staff, and this is true for us at Teddy's, live in the school. So it's, um, it's not like Snape on the corridor uh, with a torch in the middle of the night, but you do get a chance for a pupil to see their maths teacher in a classroom in the morning taking a lesson, coaching a sports session in the afternoon, in the, lecture, in, the, in the audience for a lecture or a play in the evening, and then supervising bedtime and chatting about, about their experiences in the day later on. And that's a really important part of the building of strong relationships between pupils and teachers. I went to a, a memorial service yesterday in Eton for my first Greek teacher, and the chapel was practically full. And I don't think you could find a better example of the strength of relationships that come, that come from boarding. So during adolescence, not every conversation is going to be easy. 
And sometimes teachers have to, have to find fault with what children have done, have to, have to help them to learn from their mistakes. And I do that with my own children, and sometimes those conversations are particularly hard. They seem to be the most resistant to the things that I have to say. Uh, you don't get that in a boarding school. And so some of those difficult conversations of adolescence, you don't have to have them with your children as parents because the teachers in the boarding school, where they're living for seven months of the year, can have them, uh, have them with you and for you instead. So it's not about taking your children off your hands for five years. So that was the old model for boarding. The boarding from the, the trunk and steamer era, going home at half term and at the, end of, at the end of the term. The Hogwarts Express model. So we're not like that anymore. So flexible boarding, going home overnight Saturday when, when you want to as a pupil, uh, working much more closely in partnership with parents. That's modern boarding, 21st century boarding. Harry and his, and his friends obviously went on the train by themselves and the Dursleys never came to the school. That doesn't happen. So we seek in modern boarding schools to bring parents in all the time for those conversations uh, and for those experiences uh, that precede starting. So experience days, sleepovers, uh, a taste of boarding before children start helps make that transition that little bit easier. Last thing I'd say is that there were, there were seven Harry Potter films and there were a lot of very intense experiences for the characters in them. Uh, the experiences that children have in boarding schools are not like that, they're not quite so intense, but they are really formative. So I'd just leave you with, with a question. If you think about all the people you know who went to boarding school and all the people you know who went to day school, and then ask yourself this, with how many of their friends from school are those who went to boarding school still in touch relative to those who went to a day school? And I know the answer for that for myself very clearly, and I think it is essentially, most importantly, what makes for the boarding advantage. Thank you very much. Brilliant, thank you very much, Alistair. Look at that, we've never had that before. I don't want to put you under any pressure, Emma, to get, get a round of applause, it's a very rare thing. Um, uh, uh, but um, I'm not going to make any Harry Potter jokes about sort of assaults on the school by Voldemort or anything like that. But Emma, you are now uh, head of Dragon School in Oxford, and Dragon is obviously a prep school. So Alice has given us a very good overview of Teddy's. Uh, but in terms of the prep school environment, young, very young children, for example. Thank you very much. Um, I think all of us will chime with, with what you've said, Alistair. So um, I will keep this brief about the dragon. Um, the great thing is, is that we've actually got um, Alistair's children, and we're going to be having those difficult conversations <laughs> with them, um, which we, I, will, I will look forward to. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for that round of applause. Um, firstly, um, what they're the I, most difficult in the school, aren't they? That's what I, I, I will go no further. Um, <laughs> I think, just, just to, to preempt what I'm going to say, I think the first thing is, what do I know about boarding? I didn't board, um, unlike, unlike Alistair, who talks about those friendships. Although I didn't experience them, I have certainly seen them in my children. Um, I'm a parent of a boarder, and in fact, before I came here, um, I met up with my daughter and three girls who were all in a boarding house together and talked about those friendships all now living in London together. Um, but to talk about young people boarding, we have children boarding from a younger age than obviously um, Alistair's at um, St. Edward's. And I have to say, in one positive thing about COVID, we could not have had a better advert for boarding. I think we all realised during those lockdown periods that our children don't just need parents for their education, they need a whole host of adults to work with them to really help them develop as people. And if I can say one thing about boarding, it builds character. And at a school like the Dragon, where there's such a host of opportunities and activities for the children to be involved in that develop their character across the board. You can take the academic as, as read. Actually, what a boarding education does is build character, resilience, emotional intelligence, living within a community. And I think, you know, when we were all at home learning, struggling, trying to help our children, actually that phrase, it's a village that raises a child, really chimed with us all, I think, as we realise that our children often will listen to others um, rather than, than their parents. So I think, you know, the, there is a very sort of stereotypical um, model of boarding at a young age, being sent away at eight. That is not what we do. We have a flexible model. We work with families. And actually, as parents, we don't have to pass an exam to be a parent. You know, we just sort of muddle through. Why not rely on experts who do this year in, year out to support you as a parent and obviously do the very best for your child? Um, the final thing I will say before um, passing over is, is also 
the fact that, you know, the idea of going on the train, as we were saying, that the Hogwarts Express, all of the schools that you will look at for children in prep school education will want to work with you. And all of the transition towards getting boarding will be done really, really in a very slick way so that your child is very well prepared. You won't just be dropping them off on that first day. There will be a number of occasions where the child and yourselves can get to know the people who are going to be looking after them. So please, if you are contemplating um, sending younger children away, please obviously come and see us at the Dragon. You could even go and, go and visit Teddy's at the same time. Thank you. You can do the double. We're going we're to leave Oxford now. Henry, we're going to leave Oxford and we want to hear about Oakham. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Henry Price, head of Oakham School. Uh, Oakham is a boarding and day school, exactly 50-50 of girls and boys, in fact, celebrating 50 years of co-education this year, uh, and set up absolutely on a full boarding infrastructure. And it's quite interesting listing. We, we have uh, boarding all the way down to year seven, so I'm almost a hybrid, if you like, of both. And I sit here both as someone who's uh, been a boarder, I work in my fourth boarding school, I've been a boarding housemaster. So I've spent about 25 years pontificating to parents uh, about how to bring up their children. Uh, I now have a 16-year-old, a 15-year-old, a 12-year-old, a 9-year-old. Uh, and I realise more and more how important that partnership, that triangle of trust, as I like to refer to it, between school, uh, parent and pupil is, and uh, I certainly uh, speak with a little bit less confidence about how easy it is bringing up children now uh, that I have some of my own. One of the things for me that's important about boarding is particularly thinking about the teenage boarder here and how we guide teenagers through these years, uh, is that as parents and adults we need to remember the currency of teenagers is so much about their peers and their friendships. They want us, they need us, but they're desperately trying to find their own way. And actually, we are helping in that process enormously. And it's the same thing we've felt all the time as parents, you know, from when we've wanted children to, to walk, you know, we want them to walk, but, but then we don't want to fall over, we don't quite know when to let go of their hand. And I think boarding school plays a really important process in this. The old Mars bar used to say, work, rest, and play. And boarding creates that time to work academically, to work at music, sport. Um, but it creates time to rest. Actually, the fact they can get out of bed a bit later, they can hang around, those, the, the, the use of time, I think, is more efficient. I think at one stage, and I'm a classicist, not a mathematician, I worked out that if you were just travelling half an hour each way to school, uh, you're giving up about a week of your life just to that travel. And in teenage years, you can invest that time so much better. You can rest, but you can also play, and that play is the fun of boarding. Boys and girls enjoy being in boarding, and why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they enjoy having the, the food there, the gym there, their friends there, the pitches here, the music schools around the corner? You know, it creates this environment uh, in which they can keep growing, uh, but they can you know, grow their education in, in the fullest sense of the word and actually speaking out to parents too you know I, I do believe that we are taking on some of those conversations not always the difficult conversations i think the difficult conversations we share we always do share uh, but the little conversations about putting your phone away uh, could you tidy your room uh, and tuck your shirt in and and you know have some breakfast please uh, you know we're quite good at that and we quite enjoy that and 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 we can keep doing that so i'll stop talking there but i you know i think i endorse everything that's gone before and finally uh, i'd love to hear from philip from and his view from highfield school well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Philip Evitt. I'm headmaster of Highfield School. Uh, Highfield is a co-ed boarding and day prep um, in uh, deep in the, uh, the countryside, uh, Hampshire, West Sussex. We have 175 acres of the most glorious uh, countryside for our children uh, to play in. I, I do find myself actually recognizing the perils of being the last person to speak and that really everything that you have heard absolutely uh, would have been what I would have been what I would have been emphasizing and saying to you but um, Alistair began by talking about Hogwarts and talking about magic and for me the real joy of the school I run is the magical childhood that children are able to have out of the city 
And here I speak not only as a head, but I also speak as a father and somebody who had experience of working in a big London day school before making that move out to a boarding school. Um, so 14 years at Dulwich College um, and uh, a wonderful time. But then with my children aged at the time we moved out, 18 months, just coming up to four, six and seven, um, watching them blossom in, in a, a rural environment and in a school where, however much of a cliche it sounds, uh, they were able to be children. Uh, I know that I did absolutely the best thing for them. And I can see also, you know, 22 years now into my headship there, what this has meant for probably 15, 1600 children actually who have come through the school uh, whilst I've been head. Uh, and I think coming back to that, that theme of relationships, of friendships, of character building, uh, absolutely. Um, but what is particularly, I think, noticeable about, about the, the bonds one forms through prep school is it really does teach you, and boarding prep school, it really does teach you how to recognize the strengths in everyone. Even if you don't find yourself necessarily at ease with all, even if you don't find, dare I say, that you actually like everyone, there is actually that opportunity to recognize that everybody has strengths, everybody uh, has uh, a, a point of view. And learning through that boarding environment how to rub along, how to respect, I think is a, a hugely significant part of the real benefit of boarding, along, I think, with all the magic uh, and, and with all those other strengths uh, and qualities that one can achieve that we've heard so eloquently expressed by the other, by the other three speakers, by my colleagues here. And I think that's probably all I need to say at this stage uh, for fear that I'll simply repeat what you've already heard. So thank you. Thank you very much, Philip. Well, as, as the good book says, the last shall be first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask each of you one question because to have such four high-powered people on the panel, if we asked all of you to ask each question, we could be here uh, for the rest of the day, which we would love to be, but we've only got a limited amount of time. So I'm going to start again with Philip, and I'm going to ask one of the great luxuries of being the compo is that I can ask all the really stupid questions uh, before we turn to the parents to ask the intelligent and thoughtful questions uh, from the floor. So having been at a London day school and now boarding, I mean, this talk is called the boarding advantage, which I think sets up, in my view, a bit of a sort of uh, unfair competition, because surely there is a sort of a boarding school parent or a boarding school child and a day school parent and a day school child. It's, it's horses for courses. Some people it suits and some people it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily mean one is better or worse. What do you think? Okay, well, first of all, absolutely right. Boarding does not suit And how do you work that everyone. out um, as a parent? Well, I think as a parent, why, why would you decide? I, I think we see a lot of ex-London parents at Highfield. And I think the thing that they want for their children, it, it, it goes so much beyond just having you know, lots, of, lots of green grass and lots of trees to climb. I think it's actually about a culture uh, and, and, and about a feeling. And, and perhaps more than anything, time, more time, and less pressure. Uh, and I think, you know, having, having been a, a, at a London day school for a number of years and knowing that pressure, that anxiety of, is my child, you know, are they going to succeed? Am I doing everything I can for them? How much tutoring should they have? And it becomes a, 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 a sort of a feeding frenzy through the conversations I think parents are having with other parents. You know, we all want to do the best for our, for our children, uh, but there is the danger that we simply over egg the pudding. And I think one of the things that, that, that I can see, and one of, one, of the, one of the things certainly that our parents who have made that move recognize is that their children are actually more relaxed. They are under less pressure. There is no less uh, level of academic ambition. I mean, we are incredibly uh, uh, ambitious for our children, but we want them to be able to learn in an environment that gives them time and space to do that. And more than anything else, we want them to be in an environment where they can actually you know, be happy and, and find a whole variety of, of, of strengths and skills that might not be so straightforward within the London context. I mean, I think we're all very good at deciding that our children must have you know, additional sports lessons or ballet lessons or you know, whatever it might be. 
But actually, I, th I think what the boarding environment does is there is, is such a range and choice of extracurricular activities, the children can make the judgments themselves. And the great thing about being in a boarding school is you're not having to drive them to all these different places. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think really you know, what, what our London parents find really challenging is, is initially is how we can deliver the outcomes that we deliver without the pressure, without the tutoring, um, without, you know, one might even say sort of world-weary cynicism of your, of, of your London child, you know, come on, sir, entertain us, age 12, whatever it might be, uh, that they're allowed to be children again. Um, and, uh, you know, <coughs> our, our parents really do see a difference in the level of happiness of their child taken out of that rather intense context and that, I think, is, is, is where we do make a difference. Thanks. Thanks for that. Obviously, as a uh, London day school parent whose uh, children disappear to play video games the minute they come home from school, I'm, that resonates with me. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll think again. In fact, it helps me segue into my question to Henry, which is, in my experience, also, it's not just, a, it, it, again, it's not just one entry point. You, I, I had a niece who, dis, who left a London day school to go boarding, and it was her decision at the age of about 14, I think. Do you... Do you find, as the consummate boarder yourself, as you described yourself, plus running a hybrid school, actually children come at different ages at a time that suits them, and indeed sometimes it's the child making the decision? I, I think the child being heavily influential in the decision is important. Feeling comfortable and ready to do something, I, I think, is absolutely right. I think we are seeing a bit more fluidity between that natural year eight into year nine stepping stone of boarding. I was seeing a lot more interest in year 10. And I think there's just something around, you know, I know it myself, there's something around someone who's 14 going on 15, I suppose someone 13 going on 14, that there is a big shift in maturity there. I think sixth form boarding has always been popular and will remain popular. Uh, I think pupils at that stage are often, they're ready for a change, they're trying to exert their independence, even within school, sometimes moving schools, there's a, a bit of a reboot there academically in terms of the activities and things they take on. Uh, but it, all of this again ultimately boils down to friendships and relationships and being part of a community and, and the pace at which you know, pupils want to grow up. And we all want to invest in our children, but we also have to know how much of us they want at different times. And you know, culturally, it doesn't matter where we are, in which era, children have always wanted another touch point in helping them grow up. They've always wanted that. That doesn't mean they're pushing their parents away, but they're looking for other voices. Uh, and, and I believe, and I'll stop here, one of the great things about boarding schools, whether they're full boarding or boarding schools with day, Oakham, for example, is set up on a boarding infrastructure. My staff, my ethos, is set around 24-hour, wrap around, let's bring up teenagers. And that matters because we're there to understand and support teenagers, as well as teach maths and play netball and, and everything else. Um, so we are seeing different entrance points, uh, but I think that's a, a, a mixture of parent and pupil. But pupils must be part of that. And I always say, if you feel comfortable with the school, it will work out because you'll ride out any bumps along the way. Brilliant. And um, Emma, can I ask you, talking about feeling comfortable, I was very struck by uh, Alice's phrase, trunk and steamer. The image we have of boarding school is, uh, as it were, the layman's image is very outdated because boarding schools are now very, uh, there are great facilities. You're not uh, freezing to death in a dormitory and so on. Do you want to talk a bit about how the boarding school has changed uh, from the days when I was a teenager? Absolutely, and I think that the model that we have at the Dragon is very much um, based around households as well. Um, the way in which we um, house the children is that they're in age-appropriate houses, so they're with um, either on their own with a, a year group or in two year groups, so that actually the activities that, that are organised can be age-appropriate as well. But the fact that you have a family living within those, those boarding houses so that the children very much feel that they're part of a, a mini-community within, within the, the greater environment. But... But I would say, don't be seduced by facilities. 
Um, it's very easy to go around a school and go, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Look at all these facilities. And there has to be said, there is a little bit of an arms race um, in, in our schools to, to all have the most fantastic facilities. But it's actually, the questions you should be asking as parents is, how often is my child going to use these facilities? What happens in, in, in the facilities um, that, that you will see? Because that, that is critically um, important. I think rather than facilities, it's the people that you meet that you have got to trust are going to look after your children and that, that you are going to be able to communicate effectively with because every good school will encourage you to be open and honest with them in order that we can look after your children in the, in the best possible way. Brilliant. Um, Alistair, I just want to ask you, you uh, I was also very struck by you talking about the friendships you can make at, um, at boarding school. One of the things that interests me is the mix of pupils at boarding school, I presume that there's uh, quite a heavy international contingent because uh, our boarding schools are very, very attractive to the international uh, community. And also, I presume that there are also bursaries available at most boarding schools so that the social mix is slightly uh, better than it might have been, say, 20 or 30 years ago. So if you want to comment on, on the demographics, as it were, in a typical boarding school. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really, there's two really important questions. So um, I don't know what the national numbers are in boarding schools for UK versus international, but clearly boarding is, is, uh, is an international market because you're away from home. Uh, the most important thing in a school is that people are people and we shouldn't worry about where they come from and we shouldn't worry about uh, what kind of house they go, to, go home to at the end of the day in a day school or in the holiday at a boarding school. We should treat them as we find them. And I think boarding schools are great levelers for that. So the structures that, that we run uh, bring everybody together. There's no differentiation. And once the once a border is in, and obviously even if you're in a, in a, in a model like the one at Teddy's where there's flexibility at the weekend, uh, from the return on Sunday night to the departure after games uh, or the last commitment on a Saturday afternoon, uh, the children are in school. So there's no, there's no kind of um, separateness to their, to their lives. They're all in it together. And that brings people together in a way which is really, which is really powerful. The most important thing in any community is cohesiveness, togetherness. Uh, and actually what you, what you need to achieve is, is that sense of community. And that runs, as Emma says, in the houses. That's a massively important, important part of boarding culture. But I think you can see that also at a whole school level. So being able to bring the whole school together in one place. That's one variable that, that parents should consider, that you should consider in thinking about schools for your children. I think there's something very special about having every last member of a school community, uh, teachers and pupils and other staff all together. If you, can, if you can achieve that in one of these shiny new facilities, uh, then that's, I think, a wonderful thing. Not because the buildings are great in themselves, although they are, they are very nice, uh, but because, it, because of what you can do with them. So I think that, Ed, would be my answer to your question.